Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I am going to show you how to gel print onto face masks. So if you are finding boring white face masks like I've gotten, um, you might want to add your own spin and your own colors and your own patterns to them. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a little tiny gel press plate that is the perfect size for printing onto face masks. So since it's become part of our everyday life, we might as well embrace it, just like multiple pairs of glasses. Welcome back. Today, I thought we would have some fun with a few more things from my gel press goodie box, um, as well as a couple of my own stencil designs with joggles and putting some fun patterns on something that's sort of become part of our regular life these days, which is the face mask. So I've got these plain white cotton face masks and wearing them around seems very boring to me because all of my clothing is quite colorful. And so I thought, um, that I would decorate these. And how this came about is really kind of serendipitously. I was teaching in Sedona and um, had a spill of paint and didn't have a paper towel and the paint spilled right on my artwork. So I actually grabbed my face mask to, to absorb up the paint real quick. And then it was the only face mask that I had to wear that day. So it had paint sort of, sort of just swirled and sort of messed all around it, teal paint. And I was like, wow, that actually ended up being a happy accident. And I like that face mask because at least it's got some color. So that gave me the idea of applying some uh, patterning to these masks. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna be using is I have an acrylic mount. Um, you can get these cut at the hardware store, or you can get them on joggles.com. Um, I've got a gel press um, hard rubber brayer. This is four inches, and this is a pristine brayer. But let's let's open that up. It'll never be pristine again. Um, the brayer pops out of the frame so that you can clean it and wash it. And the um, the place that the paint mostly gathers up and causes problems is right around here, which um, sometimes will prevent it from rolling smoothly. So if you take this apart and just rinse the paint out of that area pretty frequently, that helps. Um, then I've got uh, the perfect size little gel plate. It is three by five, which is perfect for the front of this mask, so it seems. So it's like it was made for it. And then I've got three of my own stencil designs. This one is called Klimped Memory, and it is all kinds of fun spirals. Um, this one is called Chunky Spirals. This was actually from my first release and one of my absolute most popular stencil designs. And then this one is called Rose Matter. And I thought that um, this would be fun to um, put the roses and the leaves onto the uh, the mask. So, so a couple of just patterned and then uh, uh, a subject with the rose. Okay, so let's get started. So let's un unwrap the gel plate, um, the little tiny gel plate. This is the three by five and it is the same material as the big plate. So I'm gonna remove the mylar sheets and discard them because they're part of the manufacturing process and they're not meant to be stored with the plate. The plate goes back in the clamshell uh, for storage and safekeeping without the brochure. Now, someone asked me on my last video, what happens when you trash the clamshell? Well, that's a great question. Um, Ranger makes a tin for the 8x10 gel plate, and I have not used it, but it is a metal tin that the gel plate can go into. So I'm going to do some research on that because my clamshells are kind of trashed too. And this is a delicate surface because if you if you put it on something, uh, even like the stencil, if you store stored it on the stencil for days on end that anything with any texture will push its texture into the plate so you really need to protect it um, and keep it from having anything smushing into the surface long term so I will look into that for you all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the gel plate right on the acrylic mount and it, I'm going to use it like a, a stamp this way so that I can flip it upside down and actually stamp the masks with it. So uh, this, this mount is not exactly the right size, but I think it should work fine. And a brand new gel plate has got such a sticky, clingy surface to it that it, it will stay on this acrylic mount um, pretty well. 
So the first um, stencil that I'm going to use is the Klimt Memory, and I am going to do that with teal because it's one of my favorite colors. So you're going to want to have some scrap paper on hand, but don't, I call it quote unquote scrap paper, but all paper gets used for something. So I'm going to use this to remove some of the paint that I don't want on the gel plate, but I'm also going to hang on to it for a future collage paper. Um, it'll become one layer for a future collage paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of teal paint onto this pristine little gel plate and roll it out with this pristine brayer. This happens only once and you are experiencing it here live or almost live. Okay. So I've got the paint spread on the little plate. I'm going to put the um, spiral Klimt memory stencil design, and then I'm going to use my scrap paper to remove the paint out of the negative spaces because what I want to work with in this one is going to be the ghost print or the print of the paint that is trapped underneath the stencil. So this paper is just to remove the paint out of the negative spaces and teal sometimes can be hard to do that because it's got a lot of white in it and white likes to grab onto the plate. So we got that out, but we still have a lot left. So let me try a different paper because some paper removes paint better than others. Here's a graph paper that I've been using that has a pretty good surface for taking the paint out. That's pretty good and it doesn't need to be perfect. We want these to look artistic and hand done and not mass manufactured. So a little imperfection is something to embrace. All right, so, and again, this will be something I can use for a layer of collage paper. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my mask smoothed out. Now I've washed these first to sort of get rid of any kind of sizing or whatever might be in there. Um, so I washed them and they're cotton, so they should take the paint, uh, just fine. Now the fluid acrylic is very viscous and so it's a very thin application. And then when we apply it with the gel plate, it's a super thin application. So this paint is not going to get hard and crusty and crack when, while bending. Like if you were to brush tube paint, heavy body paint on there, and then you bent it because of the thick application of the paint, you would probably get cracking. But this paint is such a thin application that you're not going to have any problem with that. And you can wash it and it will not come off either. So, all right. So we're going to lift the stencil off, revealing this fun pattern that is left on the plate as the ghost print. We're gonna flip that over, line it up right in the middle here and press it onto the mask. Now this is the first one that I'm doing and it's just a straightforward print. You can of course get more complex with multiple layers as we go on, but let's start simple. So there we go. We're gonna lift that up. And now we've got this fun spiral pattern, teal spiral pattern. Now the paint application is a little light. Um, we've got these, uh, little blooms happening, the little kind of bubbly blooms. That is the, um, product of a new gel plate typically because the gel plate has a little bit of oil in it. And when the oil comes out in the first few uses, it kind of bubbles through the paint. I like the way it looks, but if you're curious as to why that's happening and why it doesn't happen later on, it's because of a brand new gel plate. Now this is, uh, a thin paint application and you might want it to be more bold. It's very light in some areas. And so if you want it to be more bold, you would just add more paint. Okay. So that's my first very basic Klimt memory stencil, um, face mask. Now the next thing we can do is consider making a solid color and then putting a stencil on top of that. So another thing that you can do is come back and put a solid on top of, because the paints are translucent, on top of what we've printed, or you could consider printing a solid first and then putting the stencil on top. So if you want to come back and put a solid on top of what you've already got printed, 
For example, this one, I'll use some green gold because that's really translucent. And you can tell the translucency of the paint by whether or not you can see those black tick marks through the swatch of paint on the front of the container. So you can see that teal is not translucent at all. So if you were to put teal over a previous design, you won't be able to see through it. So that's not a good choice unless you're printing this on top. But this is highly translucent. So we will see the lower layer through it. So I'm just gonna clean off my brayer and then roll out that green gold. And I'm going to put that on top of this one, which is in the green blue family to just give it a solid color. So that on top is gonna to tone down what was behind it because we've got it on top. But that's giving me kind of a fun green layered and there's nothing to say that I can't come back on top and do another layer, just like you do with paper. So let's try starting with a color on the bottom and then putting the print on top. So I'm gonna do a solid color. So let's clean off the brayer. And pull a print with this to make sure we got all the color off. And in this process, I'm creating some interesting collage papers. Okay, so we're clean. And I'm going to start with the transparent yellow oxide. So this is a nice transparent color, so it will be light, but it's a good base, I think. So we'll start with a solid. So I'm going to line that up in the center and press. So now I've got a nice golden yellow solid with my leftover teal from when I cleaned up my spill. So I'm going to put on top of that some magenta. So again, I'm going to print off the yellow so it doesn't affect the next layer of paint color. And we're gonna do quinacridone magenta. And for this last one, I'm gonna use the rose matter stencil again. So I'm gonna line up the roses. I'm gonna get three roses on this one by angling it that way. And because this is a stencil, I want to take advantage of the negative space holes, so I'm going to put the mask right on that. This is the back side. So we're pressing the fabric through the holes in the stencil on this one and going over a solid. So here we've got a fun rose pattern in quinacridone magenta over the transparent yellow oxide solid and that gives you even more color and i don't even mind that little teal that's poking through so experiment with layering of the two whether the solids on the bottom or the top and also if you want less bold just going on white Okay, so for the next one, I'm going to use a stencil. Now, the first one I neglected to mention, this is a mask. So we wanted to take the negative space color out so the paint trapped underneath would be the actual spiral pattern. Because this is a mask, the pattern is formed by the plastic and not the holes. So the pattern is formed by the mylar in a mask, not the negative space holes. The next one I'm gonna use is a stencil. And in a stencil, the pattern is formed by the holes. So in this one, we won't be removing this, the paint out of the negative spaces because that is the pattern. That's what we want, is the paint that comes through the holes. I know it's a little confusing, but this is a stencil. So the pattern is created by the negative spaces. The holes create the pattern and this is a mask, and so the pattern is created by the plastic. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna go with a dark purple. So I'm gonna put a dark purple out, and I'm gonna go a little, a little heavier on the paint this time because the fabric is requiring a little bit more paint than paper. So let's roll out a little bit of a thicker layer. And then I'm gonna put the stencil 
line it up so that it's got, whoops, so it's got a couple roses in it right in the front and center. So let's go with this lineup. Then for this one, because I'm not going to remove the paint and then flip it over because I want to use the negative spaces, this one, I'm going to line this up as best I can. So here we're going to just line it up and press through. You're going to use your fingertips to press through because we are trying to, on this one, we are taking the paint that is in the open spaces. So this is just the opposite of the first one. We want to make sure we have good contact with the whole plate and then lift. What a pretty pattern that is. That looks really nice. So our next, my next thought is to combine two stencils, two patterns or two colors. We could get a little bit more colorful. So let's take this one off. And now we've got a negative print that could be interesting. I'm going to show you what that negative print looks like on a piece of paper. And you can decide, you know, you should practice these on paper and then you can decide which way you want to make your print. So you still get the rose pattern. You just have um, uh, a slightly lighter negative space print and a real strong border. And I'm not sure about the real strong border on the face mask. I kind of like it kind of open and organic because it doesn't fill the whole white area rather than having a real strong square border. So let's print this off again we got a couple prints and we're going to just i'm just going to print it on that scrap paper so we can get it back to clean and again this is something that i could use for collage and now i've got a clean plate so for this one the next one the the uh stencil that i have is the chunky spirals and this one i think i want to try to make a, a multi-pattern even your brayer cleanup sheets can be future collage sheets we don't want to waste any paint. So I'm going to set that aside. And my next color that I'm going to use is some green gold. So I'm going to spread the green gold out onto the plate. I'm going to get a nice spiral. I'm going to choose the one I want here. Put it right there. And I'm gonna use a scrap paper and I'm gonna remove all the rest of the paint. So this is gonna leave me room off to one side to put a second print. So I'm taking out all the extra paint and there's more. So I'm gonna switch my sheet over and do it again. There we go. Now we're back to clean. And we're going to take a new mask and spread it out flat. Take the stencil off. Now I've got the spiral, but I've also got a, a line of green gold. So working quickly, I'm going to take the paper and print that off. So that I just have the spiral that I want. And I'm going to put that over to this side. So again, it's light. Green gold is a light color and we got a little purple residual on the edge of the gel plate, but that's okay. Um, so let's see. The green gold is a light color anyway. It's not very high contrast to the white, but it's kind of nice. So let's go now with a, um, a teal spiral and we're going to go a little heavier with the paint this time. I didn't clean the plate, so the green gold is still in there, but that's kind of a nice effect. And I'm going to get a second colored spiral. So I'm going to put this one right here. And I'm going to take the paper and remove the color through the negative spaces. So let's do that again. Okay, that's looking pretty clean. And I've already got my green spiral, so when I lift this up, I'm going to also take off the second edge. And that's pretty solid on there because of the teal. Yep, 
You gotta work quickly before the right side dries. There we go. And we're gonna take advantage of the clear mounting block and the clear gel press plate so that we can line it up exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna overlap this one with the previous one. So now I've got two colored spirals and I've still got another spiral on here that I'm gonna transfer onto this cleanup sheet I've been using. So the last color that I'm gonna use for the last spiral is gonna be the manganese blue. Um, that way I've got like a nice blue green palette, which I like. Um, so I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go a little heavy on the paint, roll it out onto the three by five gel plate. I'm gonna pick yet another different spiral out of my chunky spiral stencil. Let's go with one of these oblong ones. That one right there. And then I'm gonna use my paper to take the paint out of the negative space, creating pattern on another sheet for collage paper, doing two things at a time, which is always nice. We don't wanna waste any paint, so that's fun. And we've still got paint in there. Some papers remove all the paint better than others. I find that papers with a nice smooth surface tend to pick up the most paint. So this being newsprint is not the smoothest surface, but this um, graph paper tends to work well. So let's do that. And now I'm gonna remove that and I really just wanna have this oblong one, but maybe those overlapping the first ones won't be bad. So let's try the whole thing. Let's put this here, or do we want to do it there? I think I want to do it this way. And I'll scoot it off to the side and angle it a little bit and press. So again, that's the nice thing about the clear plate and the acrylic block. You can see what you're doing. So there I've got some fun multiple spirals. And I have more interesting face masks than I did when they were solid. So here's the chunky spirals, here's the rose matter, and here's the climped memory. So I think we should do one more with the climped memory because I've got one mask left and go with a darker color. This high contrast darker color is kind of nice. So let's do that. And also remember, this is pretty smooth. It's, I mean, I don't know if it would bother you to print both sides if you would have this up against your face. I guess that's a, a a thought, um, but I was thinking you could make them reversible. So let's do one more with the Klimt Memory and let's go with a darker color. So the first one that we did was teal. It was low contrast and light application, depends on how bold you want it. Um, let's go with something high contrast and dark for this last one. I'm gonna bring out the magenta. That's always a fun color. So let's clean off this plate. Let's get this back aligned sort of in the middle and clean off the plate by pressing it onto some of the graph paper. Okay, so now we've got a new clean plate. We're going to put the magenta out. So again, I suggest you practice these prints on pieces of paper first until you sort of get the hang of it and how you want to take the paint out of the middle and what kind of colors you want to use. And then once you get uh, a plan, then go to your face masks. So let's get that Klimt Memory Spiral Stencil and let's do the edge of the top edge of this where it has like kind of a cool organic shape. Well, we're going to print that, take advantage of the edge of the mask. So we're going to lift this and we're going to bring the mask over and take advantage of that clear, line it up in the middle and press. And I love this because I use it at the edge of the mask. So instead of having a sort of an abrupt ending, it's got a nice undulating uh, loose edge of the mask. 
So you could go back in here and embellish with paintbrush. You could come back in and embellish with uh, stamping, anything that you would also do with collage paper. But here is how I use my three stencil designs from Joggles and my goodies from Gel Press being the three by five plate and the four inch brayer to um, create some fun and interesting face mask patterns. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.